October 2018 has been a really exciting month for creatives worldwide with Adobe hosting its yearly Max conference and updating XD with some cool new features. Uh, and also the team at Bohemian Coding uh, releasing a new update to its Sketch app. So version 52 comes with some awesome new features and improvements and in this tutorial we're gonna have a look at a few of them. First, we'll uh, play around with sketch data, an amazing feature that uh, brings real data into your sketch projects. Then we'll uh, learn how to use text and layer style overrides to greatly improve your workflow. And finally, we'll take a look at the improved nested Boolean operations that allow you to create really complex shapes. Hi, I'm Adi Purdila. Welcome to a new Envato Tuts Plus tutorial. Let's kick things off with sketch data. Designing with real data is always better than using placeholders. And it's better for you as a designer because it allows you to uh, see how your design accommodates real data. And it's also good for the client when you're presenting maybe early mockups or something because uh, the client doesn't get to see lorem ipsum or some other nonsense uh, placeholder, right? Well, uh, up until version 52, in order to use a real data in Sketch, you would either need to use a plugin or enter that data manually. Well, now it's built in. So you can use Sketch data to uh, add real pictures, real text to your projects with the click of a button. So let's see how it works. You can access uh, sketch data by going to the data button here. And as you can see, we have a selection from the faces UI website from tiles and also from unsplash, which is pretty cool. And as far as text goes, we can input names and world cities. So how does this work? Well, you select a layer, for example, this one, which has a background image. And let's say I want a new face to it, right? Well, let me just zoom in here. You would go to Data, Faces, and just click that. It's automatically going to download a new picture. And you can refresh the data by using this shortcut. So Shift-Command-D, just select that layer, Shift-Command-D, until you find a picture that uh, works best for you. There we go. Works the same. For example, if I want to change this uh, background image, uh, this is a symbol. So I can go inside the symbol and edit that, or we have the same option in the symbol override. As you can see here, we have a data button built in. So I can go, for example, to unsplash and get a random photo, or I can search for a photo. So let's say that I'm searching for food pictures, okay? I can type in food and unsplash will give me a food related photo. Now, command shift D does actually not work here. As you can see, it cannot refresh that data, but I can go back in here, unsplash search photo and search for food again until, you know, I get a picture that um, suits my needs. Now, this also works when I select multiple items, right? So, for example, I can go in here, and these are all symbols, but I can simply detach them from, uh, from the symbol. And then I can select all of these images, and I can go into Data, Unsplash. Let's do a random photo, for example. And it's going to put random photos in all of these. And I can press Command Shift D to remake that download and basically remake that selection. That's pretty cool. I can do the same for text. So I can select these and I can go into data, uh, let's say names, for example. And that's going to add new names to it. Command Shift D and it's going to cycle through a predefined list of names and add them right here. It's super simple now to use real data in your projects uh, with this feature. Now, you can also add 
your own custom data. So to do that, you need to do the following. For text, you need to create a new text file, preferably in a location that's always available, like for example on Dropbox or somewhere on your hard drive that's always accessible because you will need to add this in the, in the sketch preferences. So for the sake of this demo, I'm simply going to create a new file right here uh, in my assets folder. So I'm going to open up my uh, text editor. So I'm going to input a list of marketplaces from Envato, right? We have Theme Forest, Audio Jungle, Video Hive, and Code Canyon. Now what's important here is that you select all of this format, make plain text, okay? And then you save this inside my assets file as let's say marketplaces with a capital M. And make sure it's plain text encoding set to uh, the proper Unicode that you want. So hit save. And now I need to go back to sketch. I need to open up the preferences under data, add data and add marketplaces. So now I can select text and I can go into data marketplaces and that's going to populate that text with uh, the new item that I just added. It works just as well for images. Uh, just create a new folder. You can name it whatever you want, populate it with images. Now I have some large images here. I don't recommend you do this. Keep your images as small as possible and then go back to sketch under data, add data, select custom images, open, and now I can select a bunch of images, go to data, custom images, and that's going to grab images from my folder instead of uh, the ones that are provided by default with Sketch. And by the way, if you're wondering where I got this, um, these artboards, they're part of a um, UI kit designed by the Sketch team. It's called Elements, and you can find a link to it in the written version of this tutorial. If you've worked with sketch symbols before, then you know about overrides. Basically, when you create a symbol in sketch, uh, you have the option on the instances of that symbol to override elements like text and images. Well, sketch 52 builds upon that functionality and adds uh, some extra layers, which is just fantastic. You can now uh, override text styles and layer styles, um, making the job of, uh, you know, creating multiple versions of an element so much simpler. So let's see how this works. I have uh, two examples here for you. Basically, I have a list of symbols and each symbol looks like this. We have a, a little icon here. And then we have the ingredient and we have the quantity. Now for these, we currently do not have a text style. So let's go ahead and create one. For the ingredient, I'm going to say create new text style, ingredient normal. And for quantity, new text style, quantity normal, right? So far, so good. But then we also have some styles for these two elements. When the item is done, as you can see here, and you can also see it here in action. So they're kind of subdued, grayed out, right? So let's go ahead and create styles for these as well. Uh, currently, this is achieved here by reducing the opacity of the containing element to 25%. Uh, but uh, we can actually Uh, bypass that by simply going to the source and changing the opacity of the color to 25%, okay? And then we'll create a new text style, ingredient done. We'll do the same for quantity, yeah, 25%, new text style, quantity done. 
So now we have four different layers or text styles, right? We have ingredient done and ingredient normal, quantity done, quantity normal. So now, when we go back to this page and let's say that, oh, I want this item to be done, right? I want these two pieces of text to use the new done text style. Well, I can simply go into overrides and I can choose instead of ingredient normal, ingredient done. The quantity, quantity done. All right, so with just a few clicks, that's really simple to do. Now, what about layer overrides? Well, that's also really, really simple to use. So let me show you a few examples. Right now, uh, this UI kit uses symbols to do some of the color replacements. So for example, on these uh, icons, I can choose the tint and the color uh, by using some uh, predefined symbols. Okay, and that's something that you can totally do in, uh, in Sketch, but it's actually much simpler if you, you were to use uh, layer styles. So to show that, I'm gonna create a couple of rectangles here just to be able to define some layer styles. So let's say that I want this to be, to have a fill color of, I don't know, let's say this, this, I'm gonna use that color and this I'm gonna use that color, okay? So I'm gonna click this, create a new layer style and call it custom color mustard like that. Let's select this, create a new layer style, custom color leaf and this custom color, let's say a royal. Okay, so now I'm gonna edit uh, this navigation bar. And as you can see, it uh, uses this tint symbol, which I don't actually need. So I'm gonna detach it from the symbol and I'm gonna ungroup this bit. And now all I have is a layer with a fill. So I'm gonna apply a layer style to it let's say custom color of leaf. And then what I can do is I can select it in my main page and because it's a symbol, I have overrides for it, okay? So now I can go in here and I can select the color. I can go with mustard, I can go with royal, right? And it's much simpler because I don't need to keep separate symbols with colors applied to them. I can delete these, but my layer style still remain, right? I can go back in here and I can choose whatever color I want. So that's how you can apply overrides for text styles and layer styles in the new Sketch 52. Sketch is also a great tool for creating icons and illustrations. And a huge part of that process is represented by the four Boolean operations, which are union, subtract, intersect, and difference. Well, <clears throat> Sketch 52 greatly improves these operations uh, by allowing you to do some things that you couldn't do before, like use text layers and symbols. So let's see some examples. Let's say I want to use text and an image background to create sort of a mask, right? Well, let's go ahead and add an image here. I'm gonna use the data to grab just a random photo from Unsplash. And then I can type some text, let's say image. And let's make this a really big text, like for example, 150 and let's make it black. So now what I can do is I can select both of these and I can go into intersect. And basically that will create a new shape where my image, where my text masks the image. 
and it's super, super cool. Um, I also get this combined shape with both of my elements now readily, readily available for editing. So, for example, if I want a different text here, I can edit that no problem. I can say hello. And of course, I can also edit the image behind it. I can put another image, I can load it from data. It's all super, super simple. If I want a different kind of Boolean operation, I can simply click this button. I can choose none if I want to remove that, or I can choose from one of the other uh, operations available. In my case, let's just stick with intersect. So this is something you couldn't do before with Sketch using Boolean operations on text layers, but now it's easier than ever and it's uh, a really good way of creating these types of uh, typographic effects. Now you can also uh, do Boolean operations on shapes with outlines. So let's say that we have a simple shape. I'm gonna remove the fill and add a border now let's make it 10 pixels wide. So now basically I have an outline. Well, if I duplicate this, I can now get both shapes and I can combine them. Let's say for example, union to create a shape like this. And because of this new functionality, I can always edit these shapes. I can move them around. I can make them bigger. I can make them smaller. And I can see the result in real time, which is just great. Boolean operations now also work with symbols. So if I were to copy one of my shapes from my previous screen, I'm going to paste it here and I'm going to create a symbol out of it. Let's say oval, right? Well, I can now duplicate it. I can select Let's duplicate it again, right? I can select all of these and I can do all sorts of things like union maybe, or I can do subtract, or I can do intersect, or maybe difference, right? But let's stick with union, all right? So now I can, for example, go and um, uh, change my initial shape and those changes will be uh, reflected in uh, in my combined shape right here. Uh, for now, it seems though maybe it's a bug or maybe it's the intended functionality that uh, changing the, some properties for the original shape, like adding a fill or maybe changing the border width or color uh, will not affect the combined shape. As I said, I'm not sure what it is, but it's always nice to be able to play around uh, with Boolean operations and symbols. It just adds that extra layer of functionality. And uh, that's a quick look at the new features in Sketch 52. Uh, these are not obviously all of them. Uh, there is the new dark mode that you saw here. Uh, there's a big performance boost to Sketch. Uh, there's the redesigned bits of the UI. So overall, a great release. Personally, I think it's the best one they've done so far. So I'm really excited about this, really excited to uh, uh, to start working with this again and uh, see some of the new features in action. Well, that's it for me. Uh, thank you very much for watching this tutorial. Until next time, I'm Andy Pordilla. Take care.